Hey guys, welcome back to Parkitect. Today we're venturing off to Batavia K. And Batavia, Batavia K reads, A lonely island steeped in legends. The previous owner built a dueling coaster here, but not much else. Not much else. Oh, that's the end of the sentence. I'm not reading it right. <laughs> Finish what they started and turn this mysterious island into a tourist attraction. So its goals are have an experience rating of at least 80%, have at least 1,000 guests in your park, Optional, have an operating profit of 5,000. Oh, well, I can do that. And then comp complete by year three of July. Not gonna happen. Why do I have a continue button here? I must have built a map a while ago, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna start over because I think that I built that in with Construction Anarchy. Yeah. But the plan is to do a pirate theme for this map because I think it would be appropriate, especially that it's called Batavia K. And, th and there's a pirate ship actually right here so there's a ship of some sort i think josh made this map so we're gonna try to build a pirate village of some sort so let's see here what's going on around here so here's the dueling coaster so it's called blue evil and red evil okay sounds okay don't know why you named it that well okay it was just red and blue that makes sense how big is this island? I forgot. Oh, it's pretty large. Pretty spacious. So we have the station over here and things of that nature. Okay, let's see here. Let's go see what scenery I'm going to get because this is always what I am more in interested in. Oh, I've got like nothing here. Wow, we got nothing researched. So we have spooky and generic. Ouch, okay. So, spooky meaning I have yeah, all this stuff. So the details, oh, I only have the structures of spooky, not the props of spooky. So no skeletons yet. Oh, yikes. I might have to research scenery right off the bat, maybe. So we got the regular walls. Okay, we could do pirate theme, I think. Yeah, I can do it. It's not a question of if, it's more like how. Especially with the pieces and limited, because I would like to use medieval and spooky together to make pirate and a little bit of western. But I don't have western, so that's the hard part about it. So decorations needs to happen right off the bat. And then let's go see what the rides we have. Carousel, bumper cars, car ride, okay. Gentle monorail, ferris wheel, double ferris wheel, teacups, and wave swinger. Okay, those are good. Well, that's a lot of choices for this one. Uh, and excitement, go karts, swinging ships. So swinging ships gonna be great to theme because it's gonna be pirate theme. We're gonna theme this wipeout again as usual. I've been using this ride actually a lot in the last couple of campaigns. This one too, Gravitron. But the, the problem with the Gravitron is very sci-fi. So how do I decorate that? Is somewhat hard to do, but I can try. Um, junior coaster, steel coaster, and wild mouse. Okay, those are pretty typical. A junior coaster we might do. Uh, is there a coaster goal I need to do? No, no coaster goal. So it's just these two things. But I still need to build a tons of coasters to get that thousand guests. That's the difficult part about this scenario. A transport, ooh, a log plume, and a paddle boat. So we can try doing a like Treasure Falls log ride that's based around pirates. Again, the whole map's going to be pirate themed. So I'm going to try to stick with, well, not necessarily stick with this style of building here but I'm going to make my own yeah I'm gonna make this totally pirate themed hopefully we get the river rapids again I think we, we will I do like the style of rocks here and things like that so yeah let's just uh, get into building and I'll meet you over there at the time lapse okay let's start off with the first attraction to be built in the TVK always seems to be a carousel that I keep putting down first or is already there on the map so I think I've built a carousel on every map I haven't really looked back at my videos but I think I have so it's always a challenge and a fun thing to do is always change the way a carousel's cover looks like so that was kind of the objective here and again it's got to be pirate themed so I had to figure something out. So it's going to be made of materials of stone and wood. And I wanted to make these pillars kind of like separated 
I don't know, lumber stacks. And so they're actually, I think, on grid uh, 10. And then kind of squeeze together, kind of give that textured look. I know I could have used easily a square cube to fill that in, but I didn't want to. And then I found a cool little technique to that kind of just expand the base of the ride platform to kind of make it a little bit more unique. And it kind of blends into the um, sidewalk of the pathway right there, so it looks good. And then a different type of roof system. I knew from the get-go I wanted tile roofing in a lot of my buildings, so the high pitch roofs have to be what I use a lot actually in this build. And so there's a lot of shape shenanigans and some pillar shenanigans and other things like that. Kind of just get that piratey theme. And also this is the, the first thing that kind of get the pirate theme down to kind of just get your roots and then go from there. So I think always the first building you work on basically anchors down what you want to build for the rest of the park, whatever theme you're working on, honestly. I think that's what I think some players get stuck is worrying about all the little things in the park that they want versus just doing one thing at a time. So working on just a simple ride like a carousel, figuring out a cover that would match your theme, pirate, fantasy, sci-fi, or what, whatever you have it, and then you go from there. So I just did that. And then tile working, again, it's, this is over the top theming. You don't have to do this for your maps, but don't get me wrong, it looks really nice. And me, me and this tiling work on custom roofing is just me. So I did a lot of it. And it actually slowed down the map significantly after I had basically a thousand guests in the park. And then, yeah, it was just it's insane. But it's also just a fun thing to do. I, th I find it relaxing making the roofs, and then I just blueprint it and then finish on the la last three sections of these, this roof. I do like this um, carousel cover the most, actually, versus my other ones I've done before. And I think this one just kind of fits the theme way better. And, and I like that it sits directly in front of the park entrance in that area. It looks really nice to me. So just figuring out pathways. Again, nothing's necessarily planned in this park except for a couple key things, actually, when I got closer to other parts of the build. Um, Again, I'm always I'm just winging it at the most part, but sometimes it's a an actual like thought to it before actually going for it. But I knew I had a vision in my head to have somewhat of a main street and restaurants in the front. Even though gameplay wise, I don't think that's the wisest thing to do. I think the wisest thing to do would be stick your food restaurants and stuff like that in the back to attract the guests. But I keep operating on the sense of like Disneyland and I want a Main Street, so I just build Main Streets at this point. So this is going to be my pirate Main Street. This is going to be one of these houses that got, I don't know, taken over by the pirates. Let's say this, this island was a small colonial village and the pirates took it over. Basically what would happen. So this is like Tortuga from Pirates of the Caribbean. In a way, it's usually what I'm trying to do is have somewhat of a storyline. Again, I think scenery building in theme parks is a storytelling tool, and I'm basically doing that here too. So this is just going to be a very blue stucco type of building. So I'm assuming it's made of some type of rock, right? Stucco is like a rock or like sandstone type of building, and it's just painted blue. Again, I don't know why it was... I don't know why it's painted blue. Again, I looked at references of different pirate themed things and concept art in my reference pictures that I have. And I just kind of like, oh, yeah, blue fits. It fits for the theme of pirates, kind of. And yeah, I just went from there. Um, I'm also trying to always think of places to put a break room. Because I know there's already a break room in this map, I think. And there's already a, a depot that connects to the coaster. So actually... Funny thing about the Tape Kid, this is the park that has the most infrastructure already in place, which is kind of cool, but also annoying at the same time, because if you don't know it's there, that's money being pulled out of your budget. So you do have to watch out for that. But in this case, with me doing this over-the-top theming, and you make ridiculous amounts of money with those coasters already in place, it's actually one of the easier maps to theme. I didn't have to really 
freak out about it. The only thing that I had trouble in this map was scenery. I had to research a lot of scenery and I'm pretty good at using just generic theming to kind of portray the theme I want and most of the pieces that I use are from the generic pack so like the shapes, the roofs, the walls. I can at least use that and bend it to my will but there's some pieces that I really needed like barrel mounds I needed later, I needed um, skeletons for some pirate stuff, cannons, treasure chests, stuff like that. Did not have that in the beginning so I had to research those things independently. I got those eventually and so You'll see the main street not necessarily fully detailed yet because it's not there yet. Because I'm waiting for those pieces to be researched. But that's okay. The end product looks great anyway. It's just the order of things changes depending on the research order. So, but don't let that discourage you from theming because you know that you can research decorations that will get you the piece you want. I think it's worth the cost to get what you want, honestly. Again, I know you can play this map in sandbox mode, but what's the, half the fun is actually playing it in campaign mode and having the challenges of logistics. So just imagine I'm a real park owner, like I'm trying to theme my park, and a certain prop warehouse doesn't have my prop that I want, so I have to wait a couple months for it to be made. So I kind of just view it as a, it's kind of funny. And it's kind of fun to kind of lean into that being a park owner, kind of do a role play in a way. It's not necessary, but... It, it's point of the fun, right? <laughs> the imagination of it all. So, as we jump over to the third building, this is going to be a bathroom. I'm always thinking about infrastructure of some sort. And it seems like I add the bathrooms like last, which is kind of weird, but I'm always adding sense of. Not sense, it's like um, story down the boulevard. So, each building tells a story, each building had its own characteristics. And again, I want every building to serve a purpose. And some buildings will and some buildings won't. So I don't know fully what it could do. Again, it, it's it's a lot of guesswork actually, but it, it's, a, it's calculated guesswork because I'm always still thinking about the end game of, all, of it all. And also, it, it also helps that pirate theming is actually one of the funner themes to work on, in my opinion, because I've done pirate themes for a long time now. I've done a lot of different parks and probably I did I, I did the um a coaster bee challenge in a pirate theme. That was fun. So we're gonna jump down further down the island and I wanted to build a bay that would house a pirate ship. Cause you need a pirate ship for a pirate theme and it needed to be happening. And so this was the perfect spot for it. I've done this before in a old Batavia K playthrough and might as well not change the idea just do the same thing just a little different and I honestly like this map better than my first playthrough of Batavia K. I really like this map a lot. That swinging ship does not live there that will be moving later you'll see it in the break so that, that changes and then over here is going to be our second restaurant. So this kind of suggests that there's more restaurants this way, and the guest has to go that way. Um, but TVK actually had a lot of restaurants to choose from, which I do appreciate, because sometimes maps like to be really hurting, and they just don't give you anything, just say vending machine. But again, I do that in my campaign series too. Like I do that in my custom campaigns. I give you like just a, uh, a vending machine and a bathroom. Sometimes I don't even give you a bathroom because I like to be evil once in a while, but that's just my custom scenery st scenario stuff, whatever. Um, got some custom planters here for the palm trees. Wanted to give some more modern... Not necessarily, I don't know. Is planters a modern thing? It probably is. It works for me for a theme park. It also works to kind of give the palm trees somewhat of a structure or, or some type of guidance around it. I don't know. It just looked cool. And I haven't done that in this in the playthrough yet. If one of the maps basically forces me to make an abandoned mall, I'll do it, but we'll see. So here comes the next building. Still working on basically back and forth on things. I'm not necessarily on one project, so my work throughout flow is very sporadic. And I try not to show that in my time lapses, but sometimes it just 
goes through. So I'll build a wall, stare at it, give myself a second to see where it's going, work on a pathway here, maybe plant some plants over there, and then get back to the building and then work again. So I just do this all the time and I'm, I'll am all over the place and that's okay. It's messy, but it's it's like a controlled chaos if you want to think of it like that. And it's basically what it is, so that's what I'm doing. And again, with the tile roofing thing, that's just a lot of grunt work at this point. But to be honest, it looks really good. I like it, and it really makes the buildings pop. Because every paint job on there is custom made and completely random. And I like that about doing custom roofing like this. And it just, it does bump the, I think it bumps the decoration rating up significantly. I know that there's diminishing returns after placing so many props, but I don't know the full, like, mathematics of it, but I know there's diminishing returns. So I'm just basing it off of designs that I've seen. Again, it's, it's pulling references is what you need to do. So here comes the fun part, is building the pirate ship. Now the pirate ship, I wanted to give credit to Pierre for most of the structure of it, especially the sails. The sails are hard to do, and I actually had to go pull a blueprint from him that he made a while ago from the River Rapids, and I took those sails, and I had to basically reverse engineer it to figure out what pieces he used, and then I figured it out. And it's his ingenious work that he does, which makes this all the better. And again, I'm surprised that a ship can actually be made in vanilla, because the ship that I made a long time ago on the workshop called the Crimson, I think it's called, is all Freedom 2K. But doing it in vanilla, I'm actually quite surprised with it, and it looks pretty clean and pretty snazzy, and I want to do more vehicles in the future. I want to. It depends on the theme that I'm working on, so maybe like I can build a truck, another boat, a plane, a train. Oh, we should build a train next if uh, another map permits me. We'll see. I don't know. We'll just take each theme as it is. But yeah, there's Pierre's boat right here in the purple sails. I kind of plopped that down, kind of had a look at it, deconstruct it, and then did one sail and then made a blueprint and then copied that sail all over the ship. Um, the ship you see here is a little wrong, actually. I was doing the sails masts wrong. I did the masts wrong. Basically, I had three of the same type of masts when I didn't want shouldn't have and I made a simple mast you'll see in the break again again I'm always experimenting and making a mistake every once in a while happens and so I have to go in there change it up again and if it bugs me enough I have to do it it happens but all in all I this is actually I think one of my favorite ships actually out of all the campaign at this point so I really I really love it and it looks pretty good so, I love the style that Pierre used for these this type of sail. I'm not sure what type of sail this is called. I'm not a ship guy, but I like this. And I like that I use cables for rope. That adds so much more detail. And I wish the cables were colorable, but the gray works. I'm okay with the gray. It's fine. And then you have actually wagon wheels for the rims of the crow's nests. Yeah, it looks pretty snazzy. This is actually one of my, again, I've said it before, I like this ship a lot. I like the detailing, I like just, it looks natural. And it's a cool little picture spot. If you just imagine going to a theme park, you come up to this and you take a picture, and then there you go, you got yourself a memento from Batavia K, and you're off, off to the races as you go. It looks really nice. So yeah, just adding tons of details. I think I spent about, I wanna say an hour on this. Or maybe 40 minutes at, at most. Kind of was picking up the pace. But see, I want to explain why I don't like the ship there is because it just two two things that are super high just doesn't work for me and just I had to get rid of that swinging ship. It, it's in a better spot now. So it looks like we're closing up on our first time lapse and we'll go over to the live view, see how the park's operating. I'll explain some of the things and some upcoming areas of the park and uh, I'll meet you over in the time, uh, not time lapse, the uh, tour. So the first thing I want to mention is uh, off camera I did some 
pre-planning, which I normally don't do in my builds, but for this map in particular, I felt like I needed some grounding rules and some anchor points because this map is quite large to fill in. So I went ahead and used shapes as my template. So I have two different color sets here for a reason. So there's this blue one and then these blue ones here. These are going to be fake buildings, so they won't necessarily work. I won't have to necessarily build them out of walls or roofs. I can build them all out of shapes if I wanted to. The tan ones are kind of, well, this one here is going to be a building, probably housing a one restaurant or something. This over here is a test to test out some uh, overhang stuff, but that'll be later on in the time lapse. You'll see some works on that. And over here, is going to be my like my main interest in POI of the park. It's going to be like a pirate fortress. So I kind of laid out what I want it to look like. I have some towers. This subject to change 100%. But again, I wanted to fill in this space to give it something for the guests to go to. Now, there won't be any rides in it unless I can fit maybe bumper cars in here. But bumper cars are pretty large. I could stick it in here if I could actually hide it away, but I'm also having a feeling of putting in some restaurants or a gift shops, so umbrellas, uh, maybe the candy stand and the balloons. So that's the idea too. But again, I, I don't know what's going to go in here, but I want this area to kind of have a, um, well, I want the park to have a, a like a castle like Disneyland kind of way, but it's a pirate fortress. Um, the things that changed actually over here, uh, in the time lapse you watched, um, was that there was a swinging ship here that got relocated because I didn't like it sitting next to the uh, pirate ship. I felt like there's too many high points, so I moved it actually over here. And then there will be an additional building right here for it. And then this is Gravitron is going away. It's not permanent. It's just something to make money. Again, the money in this, the money in this map is very easy to make. It's just the guest count is going to be the harder one to work for. But overall, I think I have a good grasp of the map's style and theme. And we're going to lean on the pirate thing as much as I can. I also want to do some, maybe some um, mission work. Making some missions and things like that. Like, um, I can maybe an old Spanish mission over here or something, or over here. Again, I'm still researching some rides. I did get... I got Boat Dark Ride. And I think I want to build a Dark Ride. On this map I think it would work and I'll make it like Pirates of the Caribbean kind of and maybe have a small show building section so we do some realism that's the idea uh, what is the other rides I got oh yeah inverted coaster oh I want to build an inverted coaster and a wooden I think that's the two coasters I want to touch um power coasters why did I even research that that's garbage hydraulic launch that's okay I might think about that one but um ooh, a log plume we'll see I have some ideas. I'm just needing to research these. Um, the thing that took up most of my research was actually just researching scenery. Because honestly, scenery has been super difficult to have. But I have everything except for candy. And I hope candy can be researched because it has some good pieces in there. But overall, I like where this is going. So the next section is going to be working on well, the rest of the park and all this big stuff. So the um, castle and then the village needs to be built out more and then maybe hopefully we could start working on actual coasters because again having this coaster here it makes so much ridiculous amounts of money i think i priced it at 12 bucks i probably can price it at 15. again it works out but i'm going to continue working and so let's get on to working on the castle and the village okay here we go so we're going to work on the rest of the pirate village near the uh, pirate ship and just go from there. So I did explain in the break that I use these as templates or give myself a anchor or a reference point. And this does honestly help a lot. I encourage you guys to try this method. I think Robo uses this method and I never really leaned into it, but in this round I needed to. So the first restaurant, or this is just a restaurant, I think it houses hot drinks? Which is kind of odd for this map, but hot cocoa sounds good, maybe? Oh, no, that doesn't sound good at all. Not in the heat. But regardless, I put it in, it makes money, so 
I put it in. Um, this round I want to make some different type of roofing and I use some squares. The cubes are harder to use on making roofs versus cylinders. I don't know why, but they just seem to be harder to use and it takes me 10 times longer to work on a roof and that's why there's only two buildings in here that have this type of roof. So they're the, they're the most unique building actually in this entire map. They are the most unique. Actually, I wouldn't say that. They're not necessarily the most unique, but the most dramatic change in roof style. Yeah, they're just weird. I, again, I don't do a lot of square set roofs like that. I don't. It, it's weird. It just doesn't look... It, whatever. I'm ranting about roofs. I, 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 geez. Okay, so working on that, and then you saw a couple seconds ago, more like 30 seconds ago, I replaced the the, what's it called, swinging ship with teacups, which fit way better, and I built a custom roof for that, that was cool. It's always fun to find a flat ride and then build a special roof for it, or some type of cover, and then you go from there. So I, I find it a fun challenge. So there's a small little bit of realism with that back of the building, like there's a actual concrete building with a facade on it, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Again, I'm I try to lean into the realism stuff, but sometimes it, I get too lazy to do it. But I think it's also fun to kind of just mess around with the realism shenanigans and I'm going to go from there. So there's the square set tiled roofing. So this would probably be made of wood, not tile or like clay. So I do like the different look of the, the roof. It does give it a different characteristic and it makes it stand out a little bit from the rest of the village around. Actually, I think one of the buildings that I marked blue, because it's going to be fake, actually becomes real because I put down a staff room. Because the staff room is always important, especially in a map of this size. Staff rooms are extremely important. I think I put down seven. Maybe six. I, let, me, let, me, let me count my head. There's one in the main entrance. There's actually two in the harbor area right here. There's one off to the left of the ship, and there's gonna be one on the right next to the teacup, so that's three. I think there is one, there is one, oh shoot, where am I thinking? Oh, there's one gonna be near the new wooden coaster you'll see in a second. And there's gonna be one more near the back, near the uh, entrance of the dueling coaster. So maybe four? Only four? I thought I'd put down more. But regardless, if you go in the map, which will be available in the workshop, go find them. It's a little Easter egg. I don't know. Just go find the sap rooms. I don't remember how many I put down. Huh. <laughs> Who knows? Um, quick. Those are banners that I used as cloth to cover the windows to kind of give us some characteristics. Those are always fun to use because they move in the wind. Give some kinetic energy. Pretty cool. Pretty cool kinetic technique. Again, I'm using pieces that are not intended as they are because you know me I use chocolate bars for vents and cookies for pebbles so why not banners can be cloth on a window and burial grounds are just dirt which they are uh, but again <laughs> always thinking of something new um, so just figuring out so the theme of pirate is a very interesting theme because it's like a mix of colonial, England, and like tropical. So you either have the village set that's made of actual colonial buildings that are run down because pirates don't keep maintenance, or you build a whole bunch of thatched buildings out of palm fronds, right? That's the sense I'm getting when you do, do pirates, is that's what you do. Um, it's actually, again, I've, I've said this before, it's an easy, easy theme for me because I've done it so many times in so many builds, but just giving it a different characteristic here and there or trying to twist it a little bit is somewhat of a difficult part. Again, I could have easily made this like steampunk pirate, right? Not going to happen in this point, but I could have easily done that, but it didn't, didn't happen. But so you, you have, I, as I said before, you have colonial, you have a little bit of ships you build maybe a mountain here and there 
islands. I mean, Batavia Cay is perfect for that, so that's kind of what Pirates is. If I'm forgetting something of what Pirates is, um, very treasure, skeleton, stuff like that. So we're going to jump really quickly ahead to the castle. Now the castle, there's a lot of footage. I had to cut out a lot, and it took me a good hour and a half to build this castle. So, yeah, if I kept the full footage in here, you guys, this video would probably be in maybe two hours long. Right now it's an hour or something, so pray that I can describe what's going on here. So I did some castle stonework, I did some... I don't know what the top of the edge of the walls is called, like, it's something... The ba battlements, that's what they're called, battlements. So this castle is like a old British castle that the pirates took over and then went from there. Um, I like to note that little door is made of crates. That's a cool technique to use. Um, I use, make a handle actually out of one of the, the boss, the base pieces, not boss base. And so that's really cool to do. And again, this again, this castle is a lot. I did. I was able to put in the the bumper cars, so they're in the building inside it's perfect and then two restaurants underneath and i think i did i put a depot in to help with food delivery but that's it so this is the castle so far it doesn't look that great if you've already seen the pictures on let's say reddit or twitter i did add some additional like broken walls and wooden scaffolding on it later to give it some more characteristics and i did that but you don't see it in this time lapse because again i i had to cut a lot so you guys and I'm sorry if it doesn't look that good, but man, I didn't want to make this a two-hour video. That was not going to happen. Nope, not not going to. But you can kind of see that the pre-plan that I did, I kind of followed it as my template still. And it helped me a lot in that. And so the lesson in all of this actually is to do pre-planning. Lean into it. If you have to draw a map, do it. Draw a map on a piece of paper. Plan out how your park's going to look maybe on grid paper, and then follow it, but not necessarily beat to beat. Like, give yourself a guideline of what your end product's going to look like, and then it will evolve. And as you're building, things pop out, and you're like, oh, I don't like this um, Estron anymore, or, oh, I don't like this corner. Well, I can change it. It's okay. You don't have to be so rigid on it. Again, designing is a give and flow of things, and... When my gut says get rid of something, usually my gut's right, and I get rid of that thing that I don't like, or my gut says change that color. I'm like, okay, I'll change that color. And I look at it, and I'm like, okay, cool. And also giving you that visual look to it helps in with your projects you're working on because you do need that visual. Again, projects like Parkitect or Planet Coaster or I don't know, Rollercoaster Tycoon that have theme park design in them. Do you want to see that visual? You need to see it. So we're already into the next thing. I'm already rambling about my philosophy of design. In this next area, I did explain I wanted to build some mission. Didn't happen because I didn't feel like it was going to be pirate enough. And so I changed my mind and made this more of a more brand a run-down part of town, maybe more of like made of pieces of ships and stuff like that. You'll see the station for the, I think the wooden coaster I built here. Yes. So I wanted to build a new type of fence, and so I took poles and rocks, and man, that was time-consuming, but it was so worth it. Overkill, maybe, but I like it, and it makes this area feel different from the rest of the park, and that was the objective because even though I have one gigantic theme, Pirate, but there's sub-themes in Pirate that you can pull from that can make the park feel like it's a, well, a park with different lands. So you have the front of the park, which is more of a cleaner version of Pirates, then it kind of just trickles down to different parts of the island at different rates of maybe decay or, I don't know, life. Life's messy, so pirates are too, so might as well. Again, I wanted to just see what the paths would do, and the paths look pretty gnarly. So, oh, excuse me. 
onto the wooden coaster. Now I picked the most non-exciting coaster out of the bunch that I've already researched, but I don't know. An old-fashioned Woody just sounds cool, and it just feels right to me to have it in my park. And I wanted to do some chain lift shenanigans, because I think it was really cool to do so. And I like the angleness of it, it kind of fills in that space. And then, at first, I think I wanted this coaster to be designed around some Kraken. And I rig reneged on that, because I've done a Kraken before, and I don't like necessarily to repeat myself, so... That got skipped, which is fine. Not everything needs to be repeated all the time, or if it's a good idea, always lean for it. Sometimes breaking that mold is a helpful thing to do, so that's what I did. So this coaster just goes in and, in and out of itself, not really designed on anything that is in real life. Again, most of my layouts that I build are custom built for the park's intentions or design. Kind of what you should do with anything that you're working on in Parkitect or Planet Coaster or whatever you have it is your medium right now. Just kind of build it custom fit for what you need and not really worrying about realism. Even though I like the realism part of the part and that's what I try to do. Again, that's most of this series at this point is about some realism to a degree. Unless I get really lazy and forget about it, which I've done before. So at this point, I built. So yeah, I keep forgetting how many wooden coasters I've built now for this for this series. Four, four I think, or five. Four. I want to say four. Huh, whatever. So the station. I wanted to make it a upside down boat, and this came from Pierre again. He's great at doing pirate stuff too, and I just stole it. <laughs> at this point, I'm going to say I stole it, and he noticed it on the Discord. It was funny. So, it's just cylinders, and then half hemispheres on top of it, and then because there's no such thing as a half sphere, or a half cylinder, I had to make sure that those pieces were kind of blocked by those other roof pieces, and so it's kind of like they propped it up and then they added some more bits to it, and just kind of, I don't know, just ran, like, just put it together with nails and boards and just random stuff it's honestly this whole this whole uh, station's like gribblies all over it anyway because there's like other wood bits and some other tile roofing and then there's this main tower on the top and it really helps with this area being so dramatically different from say the rest of the park's lands i quite i quite enjoy it it looks good so, just doing some detailing. Again, I, I don't know what else to say about it, as you can see it on the screen. But I'm also, again, I, I, my work today has been winging it. Whatever feels great, go for it. If it doesn't feel good, start over. And don't sweat about the big stuff. Honestly, you don't need to. It's Again, it's a game, but it's a good exercise. So here comes a hard thing to do, was this uh, pyramid tiled roof. Man, this took me 40 minutes. I think it did. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say this one took me a while. I had to figure out how to stick it in, and then I had to figure out the, the edges. The edges were difficult, man. They were just not behaving. And if it was construction anarchy, I could do it. But vanilla was being a butt, and I had to figure it out. I eventually did, so those gaps have to be filled in with a cylinder, and then a border piece was on diagonal going up to kind of fill that in. And man, when I find a cool piece that helps, it feels so good. It's like, oh, it fits, it fits perfectly. What is this? It's, it's perfect. And you can see it right there, the cylinder just, it fits. And everything just comes together. It, it's, it's wild. I don't know if this is just me, but... This is what happens when I, I get something cool. It's like, I invented a new technique? What is this? And then I'll probably never use it again, because I've done this before. I've used the technique, or I invented something, and I never do it again. I will probably use this again. Like, I'm, I'm feeling like this could be for the 
one of the Asian maps that we have in the campaign, like um, the code, uh, the the oh, she was the one called it's like the garden one. I can't remember. <gasps> I can't remember the name. Whatever. But I'm probably gonna use that roof too. Regardless, it's gonna happen. So the other things I added to this station is a ship mast that's kind of broken, and then I use what's it called those banners for cloth again. I've used that before. I'm still doing custom fencing, but it does look good. It makes this area completely different and unique versus the other areas because everything's still square set fencing, but this area is more chaotic, more natural looking. It's just more the backwoods of the, of the park. And I added a Ferris wheel to add some interest in the back and give a reason why the guests need to come back here. Because when you make dead ends like this, it's not really a good park design in the long run. But I did stick a restaurant back there that you will not see. You'll see it in the tour of the map. But I worked on a lot of things. Again, I cut a lot. There was a lot cut out. So since this wasn't going to be a Kraken themed wooden coaster, I decided just to lean on the most basic thing. Skull Rock. And so it's just called Skull Mountain. Simple. Easy to pronounce, nothing too crazy, but I did like that the station was diagonal and this was the perfect spot to put the skull and have the coaster go through it twice. And this is where happy accidents happen and this is what makes it great. Like, happy little accident, the skull sits here and it's a perfect, like, camera spot. Just imagine you're at the path below, just at those two turns, and there's the skull. Just imagine a roller coaster enthusiast coming up, taking that picture, and voila, there you go. You got yourself a pretty cool picture to take home and remember your visit at Batavia K somewhere, somewhere island out of nowhere. I don't know where this island could be, off the coast of California, off the coast of, I don't know, Asia. Who knows where this island is, honestly. Never thought about that. But yeah, there's the skull. And some water that I added to add some more natural theming to it. I don't know you want to say it like that. And I think I put some lights in there to add some different, yeah, to just give it some color. And then fix the teeth a little bit, made it all rock instead of cylinders, or pillars, I think. And then tested out trying to do waterfalls with the, like, the water spout. It didn't work out, so I just did the splash mechanic, or the splash pieces. That actually worked better, and then a little bit at the bottom. And honestly, it looks good. I like the water. It adds some kinetic energy, adds some naturalness to it. And this wooden coaster is overly themed, honestly. Who does this to a wooden coaster? But me. So here comes the fun part of this whole build. The dark ride. So the dark ride worked. It worked really well. I'm actually surprised I was able to pull it off. This only was able to pull off because of the budget of this park. This budget was giving me so much money. I have 52000 in the bank as we speak, so it has a lot. Oh, excuse me, I'm like sneezing because I'm excited, whatever. Um, so I had to go figure out where the boat had to go, kind of weave its way back, and then go forward. The only thing I hate about the boat, dark boat ride, is that you have to go out of the track piece into the trough versus it being in the station. I do find that annoying, and that happens, but I had to go work around that. Also, warning of dark ride. For the boat dark ride in particular, don't build a lot of gapped, non-chained track pieces because the boats will get stranded on that piece of track and they will never move again unless the boat af before them or actually not before them after them or behind them actually gets bumps them. It works then, but yeah, you gotta build into your station, and that's what I did here. And you can actually build a two-tile station. I didn't know that. And you can still have seven boats, and I think it depends on how long your track is. So you don't have to build really big stations for your boat dark ride. So I kind of leaned into that, and that actually worked out. So most of the dark ride is covered. I do have two spots that I I um, made little cutaways to have two scenes, and 100% basing this off Pirates of the Caribbean. There's no way I wasn't going to do that. I said it before. Might as well take what's already done put my own twist to it or just make a very, I don't know, cheap version of it. Like, I'm a cheap knockoff at this point. 
I'll take that compliment any day. It's totally fine. So just building the simple building, getting my square sets, and then going to town. This is actually, I think, the most realistic building in this park that kind of represents how a real dark ride works. And while building, I actually won the campaign. I was surprised I was going to get to the thousand before you even open this attraction. So apparently me building a junior coaster off camera and a couple other flat rides helped with that. I didn't know that was going to do it, but it did it. So the first scene, actually you don't get to see me build a scene because I forgot to record. And that was my bad. So this scene is you discovering dead pirates and their treasure, like the first scene in Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride. So I kind of did pull that from there. And the second scene I worked on was the jail scene with dead pirates in it. So you can imagine that there's a, a pirate ship scene inside the ride or maybe a village kind of suggesting things like that. I don't know. Again, the building is small. This building is quite small. It would be a very crammed scenes. Maybe you would have... I want to say five scenes or maybe four scenes in total. There's really not a lot you can do with this flat, with this space. But I think I utilized it pretty well. And the rides, I think about, I want to say two minutes long. Or maybe three. Don't remember. So, the station, not the station, the building's entrance. I had in the forethought to build on a diagonal because I liked the idea of it on a diagonal because it gives some uniqueness to park attacks and it would give me a challenge to see if I can do a diagonal building and man this was fun this was way too much more fun than I thought and this should be illegal I should not be able to do this but damn it looks good so I copied the design of this building based off of the New Orleans, uh, New Orleans building at Disneyland and well, Disney World, I think they're basically the same building, or they're similar. Similar in design. They're like a colonial governor's mansion or something. So I kind of wanted to do that here. And while working on this building, I was like, might as well build a small version of like a New Orleans-esque type area too. Which you see a little bit in this time lapse. I cut out a lot, again, because, man, this video would be so long if I kept that in. But you'll see in the tour, I did a lot of little details. So the bricks, I'm making all custom bricks basically, or custom sandstone, custom windows too. And just kind of figure out how the details is. There are some of the walls that the guests walk through, but I'm going to let that slide because I wanted this to have build it so badly. And it looks really good. So what else do I say about this? This looks nice so far, just trying to figure out the logistics. And then my path, kind of giving it that different look. And then adding that shapes to kind of hide the edges of the path to give it that I don't know more clean look which I've done before. Pierre's done this too. I've noticed that he's done that in some of his vanilla builds as well and it looks really nice. I suggest you guys do that. It does take a whole lot of time and a lot of resources so do beware that it does that but it's worth it in the end. It looks good. So and this is actually really cool. I push the bottom walls actually in more to have it overhang on the top to give it more characteristic. And again, it feels like the building's 100% off grid. It totally does, but it's all grid. The whole thing is. It sits there. I did all the pillar work or the the wooden detailing all out of small cubes. I'm a madman. I had to because. If I put a regular pillar down, it would be a, like a triangular angle or a more rigid angle. So I had to do everything <laughs> with shapes. And shapes really were strong with me during this build. I was like, yes, all the shapes, especially all the cubes, were perfect. So here I'm trying to figure out how to cover up the edges here. And I just gave up on that and just did regular borders around that edge connected to the cobblestone and then just went from there. It doesn't... I... I to me, I don't like it, but to you, I don't know if it bothers you or not, but it bothers me, and at this point, I, haven't, I can't change it. It's kind of done. Map's finished. I could go into it and work on it, but I'm not going to. It's totally fine. It looks good. I like it. So there's the restaurant in the corner. That's where I needed to add some more interest to have the guests come out this way to the dark ride. And then the only thing that's missing actually from this building 
is an actual sign, but unfortunately it's a diagonal. I can't build a sign, so I skip that. But that's okay. It still looks pretty cool, and it looks really nice. So custom windows too with borders and some planes of glass, or panes of glass, it's called. Not pa yeah, it's pane, right? Yeah. Oof, English. And also I need to figure out how to do custom windows for the top of the building. Which you'll see in a second. Again, I think this is modeled after some type of governor house or something in like the Caribbean. It's the pink and it's very colonial, but it has like a watchtower on top. It's interesting, very unique building to be honest. And it was the perfect candidate too to do diagonal shenanigans. And I love how close it is to the wooden coaster. I just love how everything is so tightly fitted again. It's like a perfect pu puzzle piece. And it just fit perfectly. I don't know, I'm just amazed by myself. I'm actually just like surprised that I was able to pull this off, to be honest. I was going to give up and just build another coaster back here. Or build a couple flat rides and call it a day. But honestly, building a dark ride was worth it. And I encourage you guys to build dark rides for your park. Even though you might not see your scenes, do cutaways, and it makes it easier for your brain to understand, okay, so I have two scenes that I want to show, so these two scenes have to be connected in a way to kind of tell me a small story, a very sliver of a story, because building a dark ride, don't get me wrong, is a lot of work. You have to have so many scenes, you have this much space, you make your story. Doing it this way, you get a small glimpse of it, you go from there. I mean, I did this with... um. American Adventure, I did. I built like three dark rides for that park, and I did the same thing. I did only two cutaways, did a small story on each of them, figure out what the story was, and then went from there. And it worked out really well. So the top of the building has a watchtower of some sort. I'm not sure what to call these. Oh no, they're called a garret, aren't they? I think they're called a garret. A garret window? I don't give. I don't. I might be wrong, but I think that's what it's called. If you want to correct me in the comments, go for it. But I think it's what it's called, Garrett Window. <laughs> I'm like 75% sure, but okay. Built those. Um, those are all diagonal. Um, and then I added these weird square set. Not a square set, they're like diamond shaped windows, which actually looked really cool. I like those a lot. Those worked out really well. And then I had a British flag on top, because why not? This is like a British governor's house that the pirates finally took over so why not give it a different sense and there's junk around all that cool stuff yeah so yeah this is the end of this time lapse oh first I've been build that compass yeah I wanted a compass on the floor to give us some direction just to give some design I usually don't do this but I think it was a cool little detail to add and to kind of fill in that space I'm always finding things to fill in that space so all in all um, this is it. We're going to go to the tour. It's a very long tour, so we're going to see a lot of the park and explore all the little nooks and crannies, and I'll explain some more things, and some things that I actually worked off camera, and I'll see you guys over there. Okay, welcome to Batavia K. So this map, or this park in general, has been like one of the most fun maps I've ever worked on in a while. Um, I've actually done a Batavia K build a long time ago. I probably mentioned this in the beginning of the video that I did with Construction Anarchy and this round doing it vanilla was the challenge and it was a challenge, don't get me wrong, it was challenging to do some of these stuff but man this one was a blast and funny thing is when I work on these campaign maps now I usually lose steam at the end of it but for some reason I gain steam at the end of this build particularly and that was weird and I kind of think honestly I think I ended it off with a really good start but let's start without the entrance area we have a very modest um, piratey themed main street with a carousel information booth a restaurant um, some hidden staff rooms another bathroom oh yeah bathroom here and I think this works out this was kind of my anchor to kind of figure out Huh, anchor, get it. Um, to kind of figure out what the gist of the map would be. And I think this helped, helped a lot. And I'll say this actually concreted the map's art style and design philosophy toward the whole thing. 
So as we adventure down this boulevard, we go over to the first area that I really wanted to get into was the building the pirate ship and building the pirate town that goes with it. So this is where more of the pirates live and hang out to do shenanigans and stuff like that. And a pirate map is not complete without an actual pirate ship. And I'm quite happy and surprised that vanilla works really well with pirate ships. And it just, it looks clean. It looks really tight. I just, I'm, I'm surprising myself as I built in vanilla because I have the ideas in my head and I'm surprised how well it kind of flows out and goes from there. So we're going to actually backtrack back down the boulevard and we're going to show you the castle. So I'm going in the order of how I built everything. So I knew that the castle needed to be built around... Well, I wanted a castle or a fort that the pirates took over because again, this island would make sense that it would be a fort, part, a fort island. So it makes sense that this would exist. Again, I'm also thinking the theme park perspective that this is their weenie and it's their main I don't know their main main POI this would probably be on the park map probably be on their logo Batavia K who knows it could be any of those things but I really enjoyed doing this one I mean it's an it's an overkill for dodgems inside so yeah I don't re recommend you guys doing this but in the sake of me, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to decorate a dodgems over the top. I mean, there's a restaurant facility inside in a restroom, but honestly, this is too much work for a dodgems. So as we venture off to the back area where the wooden coaster is, I wanted to experiment with a different type of fences. And fences really help with distinguishing different areas, even though this is all pirate themed. Each area has its own distinct look. So if you look from like the beginning of the park, it's not as dirty. It's more clean, modest, pirate village type of thing. I mean, they're all pirate villages, so what am I saying? It's just more clean. But as we venture this way, we kind of get into the more rug ruggedness of it. There's a harbor, there's boxes everywhere, treasure, and dirt. And then this is like the outskirts of the jungle, so I wanted to do more ramsack shackled like um buildings made of things like that especially this coaster station is it's a pirate ship that got flipped upside down used as the the, the hall is used as a roof so i thought that was appropriate and pirates do this they kind of just build things out of wood and sails and ropes and stuff like that so i kind of wanted something there and give another opportunity to build another dock of some sort because honestly there should be a dock on every side of this island and then we venture off to the the big wooden coaster it's uh, called skull mountain i think did i call it skull mountain i think i did yes skull mountain um yeah i could have chose any other coaster in, in this map but i don't know it wouldn't just felt natural and rustic and it just fits that pirate theming and this one was fun to do and it took up a lot of space i was concerned that building such a big coaster wasn't going to help, but it helps. It looks really nice. I like how it looks. And it kind of just flows in and out of the area. I especially like the skull. This is my favorite thing, is building skulls. Especially on a diagonal, this actually helps point out its features, and it just pops. So I'll venture off to the last big thing that I worked on as my steam gathered. I decided to build a uh, boat dark raid. I discussed this in the break, I was going to do it, and I was debating back and forth what I was going to do, and I was afraid I was going to fit it in this area, but I'm surprised that I was able to fit it. And so this is just my Pirates of the Caribbean knockoff. I mean, 100% what it is. It's called Pirate's Cove, so here it is. Here's the... This is like crazy how you could do this in vanilla, and if you want that realistic feel, you can do it with a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time, and you can get something pretty cool. And I, again, you guys know me at this point. I love doing cutaways, and this is a fun thing to do. And the boats just come through. You see the little scenes. Even with the limited props we have, you can still portray a story. And if you work hard at it, and your story does come through. So again, I, I mean, I'm based on Pirates of the Caribbean. Of course, I'm going to do pretty beat to beat things. So yeah, this is the Pirate's Cove 
water ride or dark boat ride. Um, things I added during my build was the tower. I needed that for um, guests and money. Over here also I needed to build a junior coaster to kind of fit into the space. And funny thing is that most of the rides here I built on a diagonal, which is kind of crazy. Like I built this on a diagonal. I built this, I mean I built this building on a diagonal. Again, I'm surprised I was able to pull this off. I built this on a diagonal. Everything was on a diagonal today for some reason. And this map kind of just forces you to do that. But yeah, here's a little more of the pirate village next to the uh, swinging ship that I talked about relocating on my... I think it was in the break. It's been a while. But yeah, this is Batavia K. All thousand guests are here. 1,200 guests. Oh yeah, um, the this goal, the $5,000 goal, I got that actually by closing the park. Letting the guests go out, charging a flat fee of, I think, $80. That got me up to that operating profit. And then I instantly, instantaneously got it. I actually got it after the thousand guest goal. But that's fine. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to make sure that I can get that goal, and I was right. Um, the only thing that I'm missing here... Actually, it's just a big bolt spot here. I have no idea what to put here, and I think that's where my steam kind of runs out after I built the... Um, dark Ride. Oh my gosh, I can't even speak. Dark Ride. Um, yeah, but eh, I don't necessarily need to do anything here. I mean, I could have easily put like structures, or maybe some more forest. But... All in all, actually, let's, let's, let's actually do some trees and stuff. I just want to do a little bit. I I feel like it, it shouldn't be empty. So this is real quick, real quick, okay? Because we need to wrap this up and go through the main menu to see what it does. Yeah, we'll just put some bushes down. Actually, just putting bushes down actually helps. As my frames are at 27, I love it. I love it when the map gets like completely bogged down. Okay, and then we'll add some, oops, we'll add some trees, just a couple palm trees, or king palms as they're called. I'll put one there, there, make this one a little smaller, stick that one right there, and then we have to color it to kind of help it blend in. Okay, that's better. I'm not as mad now. It actually fills in the spot. So this is good. So let's quickly save the map. And then, okay, good. I named it already. That's always a good thing. And then let's go right to the menu. Okay, here we are. Ah, we got the, what is this? Oh, this is the front entrance of the park. That's what the, the trophy is. That looks really nice. So we plop that down, and I'm assuming we get the choice of Happy Co Harbor as well. Oh, we don't. Oh, so you have to beat Bis Biscayne Beach to get Happy Co Harbor. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm not really worried. Um, the next map is probably going to be Ice Shelf Islands, because that would probably be the next progression type of thing to do. Has less guests this time, that's fine. Um, this map, we're going to theme it to probably Vikings of some sort, but man, we are chipping along at this campaign up so far, and it's been a blast figuring out what themes I can put in these maps. I mean, I'm excited also for Bis Biscayne Beach, so I'm going to do a Paradise Pier theme easily, hands down. But all in all, I'm going to say thank you for guys watching today, and if you like what you see here, you can hit the subscribe button, the, hit the, I don't know the thumbs up and all that good stuff. Um, I want to thank you thank you to my Patreons for their continued support. If you want to continue to support me on Patreon, you guys can. Or if you want to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. But yeah, we're going to jump into Ice Shelf Islands, and that's the next map we'll be jumping into. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.